Hi and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I'd like to say welcome to the new subscribers. I've just hit 3k in the last couple of days and I'm absolutely buzzing. Thank you. Now today's live match is at Overton, which is just on the outskirts of Penkridge on the Staffs Worcester Canal. Now I've drawn an absolute flyer. Been wanting to get on this peg for years. I actually drew the peg many years ago, just after the marina was dug. And it was on the left hand side I drew that time. And I had 23 pounds of squat fish. Great days fishing. But surprisingly, that never won the match that day. In fact, I only finished Please third. There were two better weights than mine, both carp weights. Now, there's a lot more bream in this canal nowadays. So hopefully, I'll be able to latch into a few of them. Opinions differ on these two pegs. Some people feel the left-hand side of the bay is better. Some prefer the right-hand side. I'm not bothered which side I'm on. I'm just happy to be on one side of it. And I'm really looking forward to having a go. It's a simple approach. I'm just going to set up to fish down the track with worms and casters. And two lines over. One against the tins, which is around two, two and a half feet deep. And then into open water in the mouth of marina, which is probably about four to four and a half feet deep. And I'm going to put ground bait on that area. So I've mixed up some Sonia bait sweet skimmer with some black roach and black river. And I'm going to feed that on the one line in the deeper water towards the marina mouth at 14 and a half meters. And in that, I'm going to be putting some chopped worm, finely chopped worm, casters and a few dead pinkies yeah. right. and i'm going to lose feed casters over the top and then i'm just going to lose feed casters and a bit of hemp over to the tins and down the track i'm going to put neat chop worm with some casters in and then throw casters over the top of that i'm not messing about today I'm not put any other rigs in i intend to fish for Caster fish basically, caster and worm fish, and that is it. Not doing anything else. So I fed my worm line first down the track, because that's the line I'm intending to start on. And I'll give the lines over time to settle down, draw some fish in before I go on it. Now there's lots of bream on this peg. You don't catch them early on in the match. You catch them later on. So I've got plenty of casters with me. I've got my mate Wesley to bring me some casters, some fresh casters. He only managed to get me three quarters of a pint. But I've brought some from home out the fridge, which are perhaps a couple of weeks old. And I've got two and a half to three pints of them. So I'll start the match on the fresh casters and then we'll see how we go and see how quick we get through them. Because I expect to use a lot of bait today. Right, so I'm starting down the track on a piece of worm. I 
I'm using an half gram Preston Power Float, a size 16 N30, natural N30 hook, and see how we go. The rig was in there for less than a minute and I've hooked my first fish which turned out to be a roach. Not massive fish but well worth catching. A couple of ounces that one. So we'll try it again and see if there's any decent perch about. Just using a segment of about an inch, inch and a half, hooking it through the head and then nipping it off. This is one of those areas where you can feed a lot of bait just to draw the fish into it. I don't know whether them bream are actually in the marina, sitting in the marina or whatever, but it could take you two or three hours to actually start catching any bream. So I'm guessing that you have to feed them to draw them out of that marina. I don't know. But it's one of those pegs that gets stronger as the day goes on. So I'm happy to just catch these roach and perch while I'm waiting for the bream to turn up. So my second bite was off a of roach as well. So first thing I do now is put that rig down and pick up my caster rig. The caster rig is a 4x14 F1 fine with a size 18 natural N20 on. These hooks have really grown on me lately. If I'm catching roach, I'm thinking caster is going to be better for them. So I'll slip a single caster on the hook. And the first bite I get on that is off a of daddy rough. Go figure. So that rig's going down. I'm gonna go and have a look over, see if there's anything come out with my grain bait yet. So the float on this one is a four by fourteen into wire. Slightly smaller float because it's a little bit shallower over there. I could have perhaps got away with an half a gram power like I did in the track, looking back on it. Because when a lock opens, I don't know what happens, but it creates a kind of a vacuum and the water gushes out of that marina. So it does get a bit turbulent. But we'll see how we go. This is all right at the minute. Yeah. 
So straight over the top of the ground bait. And we'll cut our first fish over. Again, it's another roach. So again, I'm dropping the worm rig down and I'm picking up the caster rig for over. Again, that's another 4 by 14 f one fine. Exactly the same as the track rig. Obviously just set a bit shallower. All my rigs have got double six elastic on today as well because I'm expecting to catch bream. It's not too harsh for these roach either, so... So as soon as the float settles on the caster, I'm into a roach again. And I'm happy to keep putting these in the net because they're good weight builders. And then hopefully later on in the match, I'll just start catching some bream. We'll see. There's plenty of perch as well. They all love casters as well as we all know. I'll we'll keep that track line fed. And you'll notice I'm putting quite a lot of casters over. And it's a boy to chuck. And look the lovely stamp fish these are. And it's one a chuck. The shipping's a bit awkward here because you've got a hedge behind you. And you'll notice I tend to do a lot of standing up when I'm bringing fish back. So as I can get the pole back all in one go over the top of the hedge. We've trying to get the angle so as I don't have it overbalanced over the edge and cause some damage to the pole. So I'm striking into the fish, standing up bringing the pole over and turning it as I'm going and guiding it down the hedge so I can get a good balance point and break it down in one go. The first netter of the day. That's a nice stamp perch. Lovely fish. Where I've fed my ground bait is right at the right in line with the bottom of the steps on the right hand side. And I'm catching my fish directly over the top of it at the moment. Although it's a busy canal where I'm fishing, 
it's not being affected. The only time it gets affected here is when a boat is actually going in or out of the marina because it's quite a tight opening that is and they've got to do a lot of manipulating to get it into that gap so you can imagine reversing forward reversing forward all the time it can make a mess of the peg but hopefully we won't get any of that today but you never know we'll see I'll just keep putting fish in the net until something happens. So I'm just going past my feed here. I have been spraying casters over that area as well. And see if there's anything sitting off the back of the feed going towards the marina and again there's another roach a little bit smaller this one but still worth catching and it's a fisher chuck all on single caster That pole's a bit dodgy on that edge now. I've got an extra section on it. It's a bit precarious on that edge behind me. So I'm having to ship it even further down the edge to try and get a better balance. And some decent stamp roach these are. It's lovely fishing. One a chuck. one every putting lovely fishing I'm dropped back a lot slightly now back over the feed so you'll notice I keep going forward and back with the with the pole trying different areas of the peg And there's a lovely roach look at that stunning fish <laughs> loads of those in here there is <laughs> this is fantastic fishing beautiful
I'm keeping that track line fed just in case, but I don't really intend to come off where I'm fishing now on the far bank. Not while I'm catching like this anyway. It's fantastic. Have a decent perch. Putting a nice weight together, even though I haven't had any bream yet. But I keep feeding the casters heavily, hoping to draw some out of that marina. And we'll see how long it takes to get them to come out. They may not come out, sometimes they don't, but they usually do. You've got to be consistent with your feed. Keep putting casters in. I'm putting, like I say, I'm feeding two lines over there to the tins, which is on the edge of that boat, and then out into the open water. I haven't tried up against the tins yet. I expect that to be okay when I do go on that. And there's my first skimmer. It's a little tiny one. Time for the top up. So I'm just going to put the one single ball on my 14 and a half meter line. I'm not intending putting any anywhere else. A base of ground bait at 14 and a half meters and then fish around it and past it and obviously lose feed past as well. That ground bag goes on the one line every time. Now it's time to have a look against the tins. I've been loose feeding for a good hour there now. So hopefully there'll be some fish settled. We'll see what's over on the tins while I let that ball settle down. Keep feeding that track line as well. So that's fairly tight to the tins that is. I'm using a 4 by 12 F1 fine there. Settles and goes straight down the hole. Red letter day this is. Beautiful fishing. I've got my landing net set up at four meters today just in case any bream pop up further out another lovely roach look yeah i've got my landing net set at four meters so if any of them bream pop up further on out in the canal i'll be able to reach them bit awkward using a four meter landing net on this type of venue because you haven't got a lot of room behind you Keeping plenty of casters going in. Bit of emp as well over towards the tins. Bit of emp down the track. 
and caster. A lovely little run of fish up against the tins as well now. So I've got the two lines going. And I can keep switching through it between to keep bites coming. Another decent stamp roach. After a couple of fish on that line, a couple of three fish on the tins, it's time to go back into the deeper water. We'll just keep switching between the lines and picking fish off. Look at this, beautiful. Cracking fishy, and it's an absolute fisher chuck. And there's my first half decent skimmer of the day. I've had around 50 fish up to this point, pretty much all on the cast app. Now I've had a skimmer, I'm expecting to catch more. I'm still on a single caster at the minute. But once I start catching some better stamp fish, I'll switch up to a double caster and I'll even go up to the worm as well. All the time I'm putting lots of caster in. Fisher Chuck. Another decent perch. Some lovely stamp fish. All right, so now we're about an hour and a quarter into the match now. <clears throat> and I've run out of those casters that Wesley had got me. So I've used three quarters of a pint of casters in the first hour and a quarter. So I'm now onto my older casters, which I've got just over two points of.
And I'm loving this. Proper rocket ship of a peg. Switching between the lines again. Plenty of bouts as well. But they're not affecting the fishing at all. Back against the tins. Just letting it run along the tins and bang into another fish. It just makes it easier shipping the pile if I stand up. another perch another decent perch having to use the puller a bit strip a bit of elastic out get in there Back out into the deeper water. Another bout coming. Just joking with half of there. I'm trying his inside line while I wait for this bout to go through. That's half a shore to my left on the other side of the marina mouth. Back over the grain bait. Now push past it. And we're two hours into the match now, and this is my first decent skimmer. Hopefully we've had an arrival. I'll switch it up to double cast in there and see if we can catch any more of those. Bigger bait to hopefully attract some bigger fish.
Still keeping plenty of casters going in. I'm not too worried about where they're landing, as long as I'm landing between 14 and a half and 16 and a half metres, so as I can keep a good area for the fish to graze around. And I can just keep varying the distance I push out my rig. It looks like we have had an arrival because I've just got another skimmer. Happy days. Not massive skimmers, but well worth catching all of them. Still on double caster at the minute. giving it a feed before I ship out. I've pretty much abandoned feeding the track line now because I'm getting a little concerned that I'm going to run out of casters. So I'm just saving them all for where I'm fishing. Time for another top up. Sprinkle a few casters in. Bit of chopped worm. Just enough to make one ball. Mix it all in. Make one nice firm ball. And again, I'm going to feed that on my 14 and a half metre line. Then straight back out to 16 metres. That's the line I caught the first two of my skimmers off. And there's another one. Strangely enough, I never had a single bream or skimmer over the top of the ground bait. They seem to hang off the back of it. But it was still a good idea to keep it topped up, I felt. And feeding at 14 half metres wasn't interfering 
with what I was catching past it. There's a half decent one. Yeah. Absolutely lovely days fishing. That arrival happened at around two and a quarter hours into the match. Had a little run of five or six screamers before they backed off again. Interestingly, while I was catching skimmers, I could not catch roach. So when I did catch roach, I knew there wasn't any skimmers there. So I dropped back down to a single caster, which seemed to be a better bait for the roach. And I had a little period where I couldn't get many bites on anything. I think it was as the skin was backed off and the roach hadn't moved back in. This is just brilliant ice fishing. Like I said, a real red letter day. Another lovely skimmer. Get in that net. Yeah, boy. Who's a lively one? No, just leave him alone. Don't tend to do in front of me. Getting bigger. So now I've had a few on the double caster. I'm switching up to the worm rig again and putting a section of worm on to see if that will catch them any quicker or make them any bigger. Just something to try. And bang. Perfect. Absolutely brilliant. That one's even bigger still. Yeah, boy. Just making sure my rig's clear of slime there. Not a mark on the worms, so straight back out. Still 
See if we can catch another one. Now some fish in 16 metres again now. I seem to catch pretty much all my skimmers on this line. Past where I've been ground baiting. And just in the loose feed. And I'm putting quite a lot of casters in. And you knew where there wasn't any bream there because you'd start catching roach again. I had a spell where I couldn't catch any bream. I had that arrival and then they just disappeared again. And then I'll start catching roach again. But while the bream were there, I didn't catch any roach. So I pretty much knew when I was going to catch bream because I wouldn't catch roach. Like at this point here, all I could catch was roach. Chopping up a few more worms for another feed. I always like to chop my worms up quite fine on the canal. I've seen there was about six or seven worms in that pot before I chopped them up. Make a lot of mush that will. Young Charlie Smith's come to sit with me. Finished his day at work. Back on a single caster as well, mate. No bites there, so push it out, back down to 16 metres. I'm having a bit of a period here where I'm not getting many bites. So I'm back on a single caster, and I'm moving it between the lines. And we're back into the fish. As the day progressed, I got fewer and fewer bites, but the fish got bigger and bigger. 
Here's another cracking bream. Beautiful. Now. That one on an inch and a half segment of worm. Put a nice fresh one on. And straight back in after that boat. Bite's got a bit slow again off the bream, so back against the tins just to keep some bites ticking over. Lovely days fishing, this is. And the roach are great stamp as well. Some cracking roach. I'm having no bites now at 16 metres, so I'm just putting another section on. This is actually the 16 metre section off my X50 pole, which goes directly into the end of my Superior X90 to take me up to 17 and a half metres, just to see if there's anything sitting even further past my feed. And bang. There's a fish and it's a bream again. Okay. 
hard work wielding 17 and a half meters over edges but worth it when you're catching fish like this I know some people are going to ask me why I didn't just fish the rod well I felt that if I fished the rod over towards the marina mouth it would have stopped me catching any fish shorter it would have stopped me pulling them any closer towards me now I would have fished the rod if the conditions wouldn't have allowed me to fish what the way I was like if it had been windy I'd have got the rod out and fished that but I don't believe I'd have caught anywhere near as many roach as what I did. Easy. So I'm back out to just past the 16 meter mark. So I'm not dropping it in the same place much of the time. And the final fish of the day is probably the biggest bream of the day. To cap off a fantastic day's fishing. It was a wallow with this one, he came across the canal just lying on the top. Worries me when that happens, but he's in the bag. Beautiful bream. Now he decides to fright. <laughs> Too late now, mate. You're in the bag. <laughs> Look at that stunning fish. And that's the last fish of the day. Now I never managed to get the weigh-in on camera. I don't know what happened to the camera. It switched off on me. Unfortunately, I never managed to get the weigh-in on camera. I corrupted the file somehow and it just never happened. But come the end of the match, I weighed 29 pounds and 12 ounces for the victory. It was a fantastic day's fishing. I'd love to get on the peg again one day and see if I could improve on that.
but we'll see. So if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.